yeah, I'm Cherk, or uh, my friend called me Cherry. So uh, you can find me online uh, with my sh uh, social media presence over there and GitHub uh, if you're interested. So um, yeah, I'm going to tell you three things about chatbot today because um, chatbot is like a really kind of a new thing. I, I know that you know a lot of companies are using chatbot and um, or try to use chatbot to so that they're more like kind of oh we are like AI you know very smart and but. Um, how difficult it is to actually make a chatbot happen and what we can do with chatbot and uh, we'll, we'll discuss it later in, the, uh, in this talk and so yeah. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm a co-organizer of uh, London Python Sprints and also the AI Club for Gender Minorities. So yeah, uh, the London Python Sprints, we are trying to um, get people get around to contribute to open source project, I think is a, a great great opportunity for you to learn about, for example, some libraries that you use, for example, Pandas, you use it a lot, but uh, you'd never look at the internals and how things work. It would be a great opportunity for you, so um, please um, find us on Meetup. You will find us you know, posting events. Uh, also, I did some uh, open source contribution, which uh, thanks for, yeah, being you know, at the sprint, so I learned a lot. So, and also, uh, this year, I uh, just started to create a, a new package that is available on um, PyPI, it's called PyMX. If you're interested, you can Google it as well. It's on PyPI and also GitHub. Um, yeah, enough about me. So, oh, chatbot, what is this? Uh, I, I'm like this, yeah, so, so I, yeah. I, I did some research. Um, so uh, uh, there's a really good uh, Medium post that, that kind of talk about that. Um, a chatbot uh, by the Oxford Dictionary is a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users. So basically, it's like a bot that could chat to you. So this is how my, I, I understand it. And also, people talk about this Turing test. I heard about it when I was in um, primary school, secondary school. It's like a, a long time ago, people already talking about it. So it started uh, actually in 1950s. So uh, of course, it's proposed by Alan Turing. Like you, you heard about, you know, uh, our keynote speaker today. Uh, she works for the Alan Turing Institute. So it's named after him as well. It's a very famous uh, British um, uh, computer scientist that, uh, or mathematician, I forgot. But yeah, but he contributed a lot to uh, what we have nowadays. So uh, really appreciate. And um, so this test he proposed is like, um, if we can build a chatbot that the computer can for the other end of the conversation, for example, uh, if I do this test and there is like given me um, an interface that I could uh, you know, do some online chat, so whether I could distinguish the other side of this conversation, is it the chatbot or is it a human that uh, is you know, online chatting to me? So that's the Turing test. So if a chatbot that passed the Turing test, that means that it could be in, like imposed as a human. So that, mm, that's very scary. Um, so uh, of course, um, we uh, for the Turing test, I think now um, we are not achieving that like yet. There, there are bots that you know people claim to pass the Turing test, and also there are chatbots that's really close to passing the Turing test. But uh, of course, chatbot in the business, most of the time that you came across, they are not that smart, and also they are not meant to be that smart. For example, um, of course, everybody was very, very excited when, you know, um, this, like, a Google Assistant that, you know, uh, was presented. So you can say, like, oh, hello, Google, okay, Google, and then you can book a hairdresser appointment. Uh, so, yeah, I remember the next day I go to the office, everybody was talking about it. It's, like, super exciting. It's like, oh, you can call, and then without talking to a, a real receptionist, you can already book a, your appointment. So um, that's really, really smart. And also uh, in China, you know, China now um, use a lot of uh, AI and, you know, technology. Uh, for this uh, company, WeChat, that is basically like a China version of, um, of every, every social media that like, you know, uh, like Facebook plus Instagram plus WhatsApp plus everything. Um, so yeah, so this company, they, could, you, they have a chatbot that you could call a taxi or even send money to your friend. I was like, well, is it very, is it, is it that safe? Like you can just tell, you know, talk to a chatbot is like, oh, could you send like a thousand pounds to my friend? <laughs> I won't trust it, but uh, you could try. I, I haven't tried it. I, I haven't been to China for ages, so I don't know. Um, also, these uh, Revolut that, because uh, I, I use Revolut card when I go abroad, it's very convenient. And um, so I remember like, my last trip to Namibia, I was like having some problem to get some cash from the machine. So I tried to uh, ask for help, and then I, 
I go to, you know, you, you have the app and go to like the QN, like, uh, you know, oh, uh, support customer service, and then, oh, please help me, I would need to get cash. Uh, but I realized that like very soon that actually I'm talking to the chatbot. <laughs> so like, and then, and then my next uh, conversation was like, can you talk to a real human? <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh, there's, there's chatbot everywhere. Uh, sometimes you wasn't paying attention or you didn't notice, but like, um, yeah, so it's, it's really popular right now. Okay, so the three things that I want to talk about chatbot is first of all, um, the main component of a chatbot because like everything started when I tried to uh, build a chatbot myself, and then I, I start to know, okay, what do I need to build a chatbot? So uh, according to this uh, this uh, blog post, again another blog post, uh, the, because they, they put it very you know structurally, and I want to um, borrow the this structure, but uh, of course we have four main components. There's one that's like uh, natural language processing part. So uh, it's very important because you know your you, your chatbot need to be able to communicate with human. Basically, you need to understand. Like, if you talk to a human, you want the other human to understand what you're saying, right? So, this natural language processing part, sometimes not called NLP, is like it's actually the unit is called NLU, so it's because it's a natural language understanding. Because uh, you know, when the user type a message, the chatbot need to know what are you talking about? What kind of like what kind of conversation you're talking about? For example, if you say hello then you, the, the chatbot knows, oh, it's a greeting. Uh, if you, you usually say, oh, thank you very much, bye, and then the, the, the chatbot knows that it's a, it's a goodbye and then it's the end of the conversation. And also uh, entities, which like, for example, some chatbot, they need to get some information from you. So this NLU part is really helping, um, it's really the, the part that you know, uh, chatbot could understand the information that you gave to the chatbot. For example, if you ask the user, oh, what's your contact number? And then the user says, oh, my number is, da, da, da. so the, the chatbot will understand that, okay, the user is giving me his or her um, phone number and maybe I should really capture that and do some following up actions. Uh, also, there is like a, a dialogue manager, uh, which basically is to control how the conversation goes. Because um, a lot of the chatbot that you use in the business, they have a purpose. It's not like a, a bot that you know do some small talks and chit chat because you will, like th there's this reason why this user is talking to chatbot, right? For example, need help like the help desk, or book an appointment, or even you know the anything. But there is a purpose, so um, so you want a dialogue manager to control the co the flow of the conversation. For example, you want to maybe first greet uh, greet the user saying hello, good afternoon, or good morning. And then you have to uh, know that, okay, how can I help you today? So you want to know what direction the conversation should go and what the, you know, what the user wants. So uh, you need a dialogue manager to manage that. So the, the talk would, be, would have a meaning. Uh, also the content, of course. Uh, nowadays, like most chatbot is not smart, so smart that the content, like uh, the, the, the feedback or the, the conversation that the chatbot, the, the word that the chatbot is saying is not generated is actually is pre-written with scripts. So uh, usually when you build a chatbot, you have to um, say that, oh, if you detect a grid instance, you have to reply by maybe saying hello back or according to the time of the day, you say good, good morning or good afternoon. So uh, need to be pre-written. So um, it's, it's, that's called the content. And sometimes for some chatbots, you integrate it with other uh, functions like, uh, for example, if you want to collect the information from the user, you may want to store it in a database. Um, so uh, that would be some other external features that you need to, uh, to program uh, or engineer. Also, like for example, you want to prompt some external information for user. Let's say the user is asking for the weather in the city and you want to know, okay, maybe fetch the, the weather information from a website to prompt it back to your user. Or recommendation of restaurant, you can like, you know, also prompt it back to the user. Um, also, uh, what I've tried to do is uh, do a sentiment analysis of, uh, of well, the, the input of the user. That, that could be done as well. So there's, there's a lot of things that you could do. The, this uh, option is uh, endless. So now to, to, to recap, you know that there's like uh, for, for the component of uh, chatbot, there's like machine learning involved, you know, like all building the NLU is like you know, NLP and maybe it will involve some deep learning and like language model. And also you have to be able to build an app 
to, to develop it. Also, when you deploy the board, you have to know how to deploy, like, a, for example, a web app or like a, a, a usable, you know, uh, application, or maybe hooked it with uh, Slack or hooked it with Facebook, whatever. Um, also, there's some data engineering involved as well. If you want to collect the data and store it in a database, and how you orchestrate and how you got to use this, like, store it so you can use this data afterwards. This requires some data engineering. So it's the easy teamwork, really. If you want to build a chatbot from scratch, it's really, really hard. And but luckily, we have some tools available. Because, like, of course, you have heard about different, you know, um, machine learning tools that's available by different companies. So, which makes that now everybody can actually build a chatbot, um, which uh, I would also give more information later. So, the second things I got to tell you about chatbot is like what a chatbot can and cannot do. Like the, the, at the beginning, I said like, okay, we have this Turing test, but maybe a lot of bot that now we came across is not, it's not passing the Turing test because maybe it's not what we we want the chatbot to, to do. So. So what a chatbot can and cannot do, like if we want something, can we really build a chatbot to achieve that? So I have come across this post, it's about why a chatbot fails. So who has come across a really horrible chatbot that you'd rather just, you know, click or fill in the form? Yes, a lot of you. So yeah, why, why a chatbot? Like, you know, now, you know, we have machine learning, deep learning, NLP, why a chatbot is so horrible? It's like, we can, you know, make make a you know decision, you know, build some some you know machine learning to make decision. Why we can't have a chatbot? So uh, I, of course, like you, you can also you know go to this um, to to have a look. But uh, I gather some you know some points and also add my own opinion. So first, the chatbot are trying too hard to pass the Turing test. Uh, as I said before, um, a chatbot because like a lot of the time, if a business uses a chatbot, they have a certain purpose, and for some, like if some of the bad design chatbot that I've came across is like they pretend to be human, but like but they they're not like like the chatbot that I use for let's say the help desk uh, that I talk about. It's like after a couple of conversations, you would know that is you are talking to a bot, and then you feel like don't pretend to be a human. I know it's a chatbot. I'm, I don't want to be fool. I'm not stupid. Uh, and also some of the chatbot they handle too many things at once. Is well a chatbot is not human. They have a certain purpose and. They shouldn't be able to. Okay, they shouldn't be able to do some like chit chat with the the user, and then also find out the weather, and also find the recommendation for a restaurant, and also do the booking. Uh, I think that's that's too much. Uh, even you know, Google. I think maybe if, if if Google you know have that money and the resources, maybe they can do something like that, more closer to that. But I think most of the time, if we build a chatbot for our company, let's say, it should have a certain purpose and shouldn't be handling handling too many things. So yeah. A lot of times, like people like what I did is like I end up like, can I talk to a re real human or what, what button I need to press so I can really like call the call a real operator on the other side of the line? So, with, which is defeat the purpose of a chatbot? You want like to kind of maybe make it more efficient for for user to you know um, for a company to interact with their customers without hiring like a, a big you know team of people who handle the calls and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I think it, it would be better if, uh, if we, when we just like made a chatbot, that we can kind of make it clear that you are talking to a chatbot, so um, it's got to be that way, and you know, you, you lower your expectation. Uh, also, a uh, lack of uh, the clear dialogue flow. Um, a lot of the time, that um, as I said, there's the, the board. There's a purpose, and then the best design ones are the ones that you know is very clear about what I need from you. For example, if you want to book uh, a table in a restaurant, what I need from you maybe how many people, when are you coming, um, any you know people would need special uh, dietary requirements, uh, all these stuff, and also maybe your contact information. So um, yeah, the ch the chatbot needs to like uh, handle it. Like for example need to get the information one by one. So, okay, if you tell me a bunch of things, maybe I am lacking how many people are coming, then I know that I have to ask, oh, how many people are coming, how big a table I need to book for you. Uh, and also, minimize the chit chat. It's, again, chatbot is not for chit chat. If the chatbot is for help people to book a table at the, 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 the restaurant, then like, you, sh you shouldn't be talking about the weather, right? Or, well, maybe, maybe a little bit, like, because there's outdoor seating, but maybe it shouldn't be asking you, oh, how are you feeling today? Do you want to book a GP appointment as well? 
no, because I'm running a restaurant. Why would you? I book a GP, <laughs> GP like, appointment for you. So yeah, like minimize the chit chat. Try to get the job done. Um, and also, what well, you say, if they know that they're talking to a chatbot, they, they, they actually the user will adapt how to communicate with the chatbot. That's very funny. And but but I think that works better than a, a user getting super frustrated because they don't know that they're talking to a chatbot. They don't know how to handle the conversation. So um, I think that would be a better choice. Also, some, some chatbots, they are not, um, they're not, they're, they claim to be not smart enough. Why? Because maybe they have not enough training data, so they have a bad NLU model. So it, it's not really working. So it's like you have chatbots that ask a lot of times, like, sorry, I don't understand. Could you repeat? Sorry, I don't understand. Could you repeat? So it's like, oh, this chatbot is rubbish. It doesn't understand what I'm saying. So, mm. Uh, also, um, not enough content delivery, like for, uh, diversity, like for example, um, as I said, that there, you have to script every single reply from the chatbot. If you only have one reply, then it feels really dull. For example, if every time I say hello to the chatbot, the chatbot will only say, oh, hello, what can I help you? So it's again, it's like every time it's like, hello, what can I help you? You feel really robotic. I mean, like a chatbot, of course, is a chatbot, but the, the thing is that like, we try to make it towards more like a smooth conversation, but it's more similar to a conversation between two humans. So if it's too repetitive, it's still you know, not, not making it a good user experience. Um, also, it avoids making this decision tree like uh, the, the best bot out, like, out there is usually they can handle you know, um, a, a, a decision. Like you know, they can, for example, booking a table, you can tell the chatbot first like, oh, I have six people. Or you can tell the chatbot first, like, oh, when I'm coming. But the, the chatbot can still handle the, the, uh, the conversation. But uh, some of the chatbot, they have the decision trees. Like, they have to ask, oh, first of all, how many people are coming? OK. And then, uh, like, what time? And then, like, well, if you, your chatbot is doing that, then it's basically you can um, ask the user to fill in a form. And it's maybe faster and easier, less frustrated. So uh, to sum up, what are the good ones? Like, the dogs are happy because. The chat voice is good. Um, so yeah, of course, we need a good uh, NLP cap capability. So um, like, for example, as I said, uh, uh, there's, I have used the iCalendar in my Mac. I, I'm a, a new Mac user. I'm loving it. And I discovered that in, in like using Mac. If you go to the Canada and want to put down, I have an appointment and meeting, let's say, meeting John for coffee like the, the, today at 3. And then if you just write that down, I can and will just put in your appointment for you. You don't have to fill in, like, manually fill in, OK, free for one hour meeting at, let's say, a meeting at St. Paul's. And like, you don't have to put all these down. You can just type a sentence, very natural language-ish, and then it would do, do the thing for you. So it's, it's a really, really, really good example of what the NLP capability need to be. It could be just like a very natural sentence, but the board is able to extract the, the entity from that sentence. Another example is Gmail. I use Gmail a lot. And then sometimes you know, people tell me, like, oh, uh, please remind, uh, be, be reminded of your appointment tomorrow sometime, sometime. And then Google will highlight it for me. So like, for example, uh, you highlight the address. So I just click on it. Then I know that where do I have to go, which is super convenient. Um, so th those are the good NLP um, examples. Um, also. User need to know that they are chatting to chatting to an assistant, a bot, not a human. Again, don't make your user having high expectation that they're talking to a customer service person. Um, they're just talking to a customer service assistant, and the, the user will adopt like how they should talk to this thing rather than you know doing all these chit chats like oh hello how are you thank you for your help and you know like just 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 talk about the important stuff. Um, also, be clear what you want from the user. Like, uh, yeah, just don't try to do a lot of chit chat just to look smart or pass the Turing test or whatever. Also, uh, fa fail gracefully. So, of course, a chatbot will fail because you know a chatbot is still bored. So sometimes it doesn't understand what the user is saying, but you can maybe like just be a little bit more smart and make the conversation to redirect to what the bot wants rather than, oh, sorry, I don't understand. Could you repeat? Oh, sorry, sorry, I don't understand. Can you repeat? So. Or even like you want to ask for repeat, you can ask like what specifically you don't understand. Like, oh, so do you mean like, so how many people are coming to this restaurant? Rather than, oh, sorry, I don't understand. So th that's much better. So the third thing I would like to talk about is like, which one to use, uh, 
again, as I said uh, before, that um, you know we have all these. Uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to build a chatbot from scratch. So most probably, if you want to build a chatbot, you will need to uh, use one of the, the already built framework that's available. So um, I use a lot uh, Rasa because I love open source. I'm an open source fanatic person. So uh, Rasa is an open source project. Uh, I, I know about it uh, last year when I went to a talk and then somebody was talking about it. Of course, uh, like other open source projects, it has the community, community support. So uh, there is a Rasa community forum. You can ask questions and it, yeah. So. Um, also, it could. The good thing I, I like about it is fully customizable. So you can build, like, what um, what language model you want to use. So in Rasa, you can. I have tried different, like, two two many different type of pipeline. You can um, use uh, Spacey model. So uh, if, if you heard about Spacey, it's a, a natural language tool. So it will help. You know. Uh, Pre, like uh, your, you don't have to provide lots of training data. It's kind of more like a pre-trained model, so it could help you to understand, for example, is that like a person or is it like uh, so? What what intent and what entity you have in the conversation? Um, but also, you can choose to have a TensorFlow uh, backend, so you can uh, have lots of lots of training data to um, to customize. For example, the, the example that the Rasa documentation provided is uh, if you are building a, a chatbot for, uh, let's say, a bank or a financial service. So balance could mean that how much money a user have rest like in their account, rather than balance, you know, like, you know, like doing yoga, you have to balance yourself with two different uh, kind of um, contents of the word. So if you have something very special like that, then maybe you rather do a TensorFlow, um, you know, custom trained, uh, it's a, I think it's a transfer learning, uh, a transfer trained model. Um, also, you can have a custom functionality. Uh, like I said, I've tried to build sentiment analysis with it. So you can add like whatever function you want it to use. It's full, like you can even change the source code if you want. Um, but the, uh, my, my think, of, uh, my, my kind of what I think it kind of need is like, it's, uh, you have to deploy yourself because the the open source like free version is like it's you know um, you have to find a way to deploy it like uh, online. You can also I think they provided a, a way to use so you can hook it with uh, Slack and also hook it with other things like Facebook or WhatsApp and all these services. You can have API to hook it up. But um, but if you want it to be on your website, for example, you have to think about a way to deploy it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but now they have an enterprise version available, so it's more support. It's like um, you get professional support and all this to help you. So um, you can consider that if you're using it at work. <coughs> so um, Watson, a very famous one. I think you have heard about that. It's the IBM. Um, I haven't used it personally, but I've been to their workshop. Um, so far, my um, experience using them is a very easy to use tool. Um, also, they claim that they have the Slack community. I haven't used it, but uh, I think um, you can join if you're using. Um, <coughs> um, I think I drink too much coffee, sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, you can go to their website to see. I think a, a lot of people praise it to be very easy to use. Um, Dialogflow is uh, provided by Google. Um, it's also a place to be very easy to deploy because you know Google also provides lots of cloud services, which uh, you can, if you are use, already using their cloud service, I think it would be a good choice if you use it as well. Um, so they have this uh, Google group that you could, again, it's like a forum, you can find some community support there as well. They provide a free edition that you could uh, try out. But of course, like, uh, if you, you know, you're doing it professionally, you may want to consider the pay-as-you-go kind of enterprise edition. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. So yeah, I also, I, uh, I haven't used it uh, for my pers personal or work project, but uh, I've been to one of their workshop that uh, you can, so oh, uh, this also provides speech to text. Uh, Watson as well. They provide a speech to text. So, um, so I remember in the workshop, there's like a, you, you can build it so you can say to your phone. So it hook up with this um, 
dialogue flow. So you can ask for a, a, a television program in Netherlands. So because I, I did it in Amsterdam, so that's why it's a television program in Netherlands. And it also support Dutch, which is like, of course, like Google, they support a lot of different languages, which is good. Oh, by the way, uh, Rasa, they also, um, you can change the language model that you're using. For example, Spacey also support um, German, I believe. So yeah, you can also custom made if you have a other language model, but uh, of course you have to do it yourself. It's also um, require more technicals and resources. So Lex uh, is uh, another similar service to Dialogflow and, um, and Watson that's provided by Amazon Web Service. Um, so they are also, if you are using, they, they provide a lot of cloud services, it's very popular for that. So if you're using uh, one of their services, then maybe you could consider integrating Lex with that as well. Uh, they have lots of SDK, so if you, oh, I assume everybody is using Python here in this room, but uh, if you use other languages, if you prefer to build your chatbot with other languages, you can use that as well. Um, they have a forum that you could um, um, also have an exchange, you know, ask questions and stuff. And uh, like most, uh, like all Amazon web servers that you know. Uh, I think most, not all of them, but yeah, most Amazon web servers, they provide a free tier. If you uh, sign up for the first year, uh, you can use Lex for limited usage up to a certain point per month. Uh, but of course, if you build it for your website or for your, you know, um, for your company, then you need to get the pay, you know, the, you know, like Amazon other web servers, it's like how much you use and how much you pay, things like that. Yeah, so comparison. Uh, let's let's put it like more simpler, and then uh, as I said, like I have used Rasa and Lex, but not that much uh, Watson and, and dialogue flow. So I try to get some opinions from other people. Uh, so this is uh, another blog post. So this is what they said. Documentation. They said that dialogue flows has a really good documentation. Uh, my uh, opinion about this, like I've used Rasa, they like because it's. It's an open source project and the community is lovely, so I think the documentation is very good and also they, they have these like kind of uh, a, a tutorial that you could follow, which is good. Also, a lot of community build tutorial and examples and blogs. Uh, Lex, uh, it's very frustrating, like most Amazon web servers that I've tried to use, I think, because uh, they are mainly for enterprise and for professionals. They also, you know, do certificates, so I think for, for people like me who want to try a new service, then it's kind of feel a bit difficult to follow the documentation. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's my opinion, and also this box opinion. Um, configuration, of course, as I said, Rasa, you have to find your own way to um, to, to host and deploy it, so it's feel a bit like uh, more, like, need more skills about, you know, like deploying it rather than the others. Also, like, if you want to train it, you also need to have some basic understanding of NLP and stuff, so it's, uh, it's more frustrated for beginners or people who are not so technical. Um, uh, Watson was praised because it's uh, like a very easy to use. They have all these, you know, very clear diagram of what what component linked to what. So I think that's why people think it's uh, very easy to configure it. Um, for testing, they said like uh, the, the the you know Rasa is difficult. I don't think I don't probably agree on that. That Rasa is difficult to train. I think again you need some knowledge of NLP and know what's going wrong to be able to um, fix like for example what you need to train more or like fix the pipeline or something. But for the others, I think because it's like a commercially kind of um, prepared um, model that like maybe. It's, people who are like software developers they can also use. It's not, you know, for people who is like NLP expert <laughs> to use. So, um, so that's why it's easier to train. They just need to know, like maybe set the purpose of, of the board and like how to direct the, 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 the dialogue or how to, what entity they want to capture. And, and that's it, they don't really need to think too much about the NLP part. So that's why it's easier. So these are my, my, uh, my opinion. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, don't, don't be angry with me if you don't agree. We can have a chat. Um, flexibility, of course, as I said, Rasa is open source. It's completely flexible. You can add whatever you like. You can even change the code if you don't want to. Uh, don't, don't want the original code. Don't like anything about the original code. Uh, of course, for the others, I've used Lex. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, I can't change a lot. What Lex, you know, even like for entities, I was like, um, this is not how I want them to extract the entities, but. I really um, struggle to, to get it done. It's not so customizable. Um, how, how am I doing with time? Okay, 
Okay, so yeah, um, for diffi uh, how difficult it is, like again, like Rasa, like you have to have under you have to uh, be able to write Python code. Um, also, you have to have understanding of NLP, and when you deploy, you have to have understanding of um, you know developing like deploying a web app. So, so yeah, it's not difficult, but uh, but I think it's totally worth it. I love learning new stuff. Price, of course, open source is free. Like you can't beat that. Like yeah, this. Like they provide a free version you could try, but I think at the end, if you want to uh, use it, and uh, you have to, of course, pray, pay for their service and the support as well. So, yeah, you choose. <laughs> so yeah, my two cents is like, before you kind of, let's say if you have an awesome startup and you want to build a chatbot, um, so you have to ask yourself, what's the purpose of the chatbot? Uh, so you know that like well, the boundary of the chatbot, what it needs to achieve, what it doesn't need to achieve, then you can choose um, what, uh, if you, for example, if you want your chatbot to have s many functionalities and like, then maybe you should consider using Rasa because it's flexible. But if it's like always, oh, it's, it's very easy, I just want to capture some information from the user, then yeah, then you can uh, maybe use one of the, the, the service provided by um, like Lex or Watson or something. Yeah, or uh, what resources do you have? Uh, do you have already have some cloud service that you can, you know, uh, you can deploy your app on the instance, or you like, let's say you're already using the cloud service by Google or by um, Amazon, maybe you want to, you know, integrate the chatbot with the same, so you don't have to cross platform and all these things. So what do you have? And also, um, how are you gonna deploy it? Do you want to hook it up with you know, um, other things like uh, Slack or Facebook, then maybe you ha worry less about deploying it yourself with browser. Um, also, what skill level do you have? Like, are you, how much do you know about NLP? How much do you know about uh, web, you know, deployment? I, I, I can't do web deployment, I'm, I'm, I'm not a web developer. But yeah, how, what skills level do you have? And how much time do you want to invest in it? Like, everybody can learn something new and like, customize it fully, but how much time do you want to invest in it? So that's the question you have to ask yourself. So yeah, I think it's uh, almost towards the end of the time slot that I have. Uh, I want to make an uh, advertisement about, um, well, it's, it's not an advertisement, it's just like a, a call about the, the workshop that uh, I have done before. And also I'm going to run a unconference session tomorrow at uh, 2.15, which uh, I will be, it's like a help desk kind of um, thing that you know, if you have problems with these Rasa workshop that I built, then you could, um, yeah, you could uh, come to find me. But uh, this workshop, I can actually I can show you. I have a little bit of time. Yeah. So this this workshop is you know it's completely free. It's just I built for the community. Um, so yeah, it's like it's very self documented, like self you know documented. You can do it yourself at home. You just need to set up the environment and install all these like open free open source libraries. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I would do a unconference session tomorrow, so you can totally, uh, if you have any questions or you're struggling, or if you just like, oh, I won't do it at home because I, I, I have a lot of things to do at home. You want to have a session, you sit down and start doing it. You can do it tomorrow at the unconference. And um, yeah, or ping me, find me on GitHub, Twitter, and uh, yeah, so just just have fun. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something about chatbot today. So thank you so much. We are passing the mic. Uh, if you could get the mic and ask the question, that would be really appreciated. Hey, thanks. That was very nice. Um, any experience with uh, Azure bot? Azure? Yeah, oh, the Microsoft Azure right. one. Yeah, not that much experience with that. I mainly, yeah, I've, I mainly use Rasa. I've tried to use Lex before, but for yeah. the others, I have, you know, like, like, yeah, Watson and Azure. I haven't, I haven't even been to the workshop, but yeah, Watson and Google. I've been to the workshop and play around, but haven't really used it. So yeah, so yeah. for Azure, really, no idea. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Thanks. But yeah, if if you you have ideas, then yeah. <laughs> 
Hi, thanks very much. I was wondering if you had any advice for the uh, user testing phase of a chatbot implementation where you have, uh, you know, presumably some odd results coming up that you're never going to be able to, um, you know, cover off all the possibilities of everything, you know, and how to explain that, how to like build that into the project. Yes, uh, yeah, that, that, that's the, uh, in Rasa, it's called fallback action. So, uh, of course, like, you will, you will fail. Like, you, you, so, in Rasa, the easiest solution would be, if you don't understand something, you prepare, like, five different ways of asking the user to be specific and repeat. Um, so, that, I won't say there's, like, cover up, because people know that your bot kind of screw up. Like, uh, don't, don't understand what I'm saying, but instead of just, robotically asking for a repeat, you can be like, oh, I can see that you may be trying to book a table. Uh, how many people are coming, by the way? You know, like, uh, yeah, like, just try to make the script. It's just more about, for me, it's like, I think it's like more like an art than technology, that you kind of make the user experience more smooth than um, just feeling robotic. The fail gracefully suggestion, right? Yeah, gracefully. As much as possible. Yeah, yeah. you fall on, like, flat your face on the floor, but, like, gracefully stand up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the talk. Uh, question about, I think you said your manager ha had asked for a chat bot and that's yeah. how <laughs> you started working on this. So, it, but then you changed jobs. So yep. was it a, was it a, like a, the corporate world? And I'm mostly curious when you're not using GCP or whatever the other, um, or IBM or et cetera, um, did you find it easy to bring in the, either the Raza or any of the other ones? Um, into the job, D do you see what I mean? Was it easily, yeah. um, I don't know, accepted given maybe the limitations that the corporate world might have? Yeah, I think uh, in the work have situation, because I was lucky that I was working in a startup before, so, it's, so yeah, it's like the structure is very flat, you can propose. I, I, I assume that if you work in a big co corporate, then maybe if you are not working in an IT department, then it's so difficult to, like even you have you have this cool idea of let's be a chatbot and put it at the customer service page and all this, but it would be difficult to kind of you know um, convince who like even like who is in charge of making the decision. Yes, like green light or no, then yeah, it's it's more difficult. So 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 now it's like now because I changed job and uh, now I work in a more structured uh, organization. So now I become my my side project is it become um, but um, but even that like because there's a lot of uh, need for chatbot. Like, if you talk to any, like, people, I even if you talk to some, like, people working in a bank, they'll be like, oh, that would be very cool if we can talk to the customer and, like, so I think it would be good to know how to do it. And, uh, yeah, and it could be your next job is, you know, being a, a chatbot expert. Because I know somebody who get, like, yeah, she, she's actually a chatbot expert and she was hired by a very famous company because of that. and. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of opportunity there, yeah. Okay, we have time for one more question. No, okay, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.